Hi, everybody. And I'm so excited to be here on our weekly Q&A, here to discuss your questions. Please make sure you put them in the chat and allow StreamYard to see your chat so that I can uh, follow along and see your questions as we are going. So every Thursday, we are going to be here doing a Q&A uh, this month all about the questions that you have, those of you going through the awesome Shabbat Isle Dilway Blueprint digital course on your own, questions I'm seeing in the group coaching, which is currently closed. It will open up in another eight weeks. And uh, from that cohort, we're having amazing questions and discussion and from private clients and you guys here in the community. Every week you'll have a chance to ask questions in advance, and those are gonna be the topics that we will quickly go over in about 30 minutes every single Thursday. So make sure you put your questions uh, here in the comments, and today's topics are gonna to be Shavuot, they're gonna be uh, exhausted eating, and how to get remotivated without shaming and self-critical talk. When you feel like, um, I can't believe it's Shavuot already, I'm still feeling a little bit maybe off my game from Passover. So these are some of the topics that you guys have been asking me about and that have been coming up. So let's discuss Shavuot. Uh, let's start there. So please put some questions, hashtag replay with your questions so I'll be able to come back and see it when you're watching the replay with your questions. So a few questions I have here that came in on Shavuot are, uh, anticipating versus reacting. We started talking about this a little bit last week and looking ahead to what your personal family costumes are that make the holiday the most fun. For us, we have a big cheesecake party with lots of friends and everybody brings all the cheesecakes uh, in the last uh, meals of Shavuot and there's a big tasting and a little bit competitive about who has the best ones. So really important to know that's coming up at the beginning of the holiday. So if I'm going to be tasting cheesecake at the end of the holiday, maybe I don't need to eat cheesecake at every single meal up until then. And I'm going to wait and let the anticipation build and build. So instead of having FOMO every single time it's coming, I'm actually having joy of missing out gratitude because I know I'm going to get to taste all of them at the end. Another approach to cheesecake is making individual servings based on your style. So a few different things that my coaching cohort actually came up with themselves when we were discussing this topic was if you love to have a big cheesecake, kind of like a centerpiece, to use a smaller pan, like a five or seven inch pan, so that after everyone has a slice, it's finished. Making just one flavor cheesecake at a time. For those who had uh, customs to make lots of different flavors of cheesecake, we came up with actually using a mini cupcake pan and making a tasting menu of different kinds of cheesecakes so that three would be a little bit more of a serving and you'd be able to enjoy them over the holiday. Last was somebody who wanted to make a single serving cheesecake and using about a cupcake inch pan and doing multiple flavors but doing a different flavor at the two meals. This year, Shavuos is coming out immediately after Shabbos. So you want to keep that in mind. This isn't the week that you want to have super big, fancy, indulgent Shabbat meals. Unless you're kind of thinking in your mind, this is a two, three day holiday and I'm going to pace myself. One of the best ways to do that is to invite guests for daytime meals and keep the night meals lighter. Because what we eat at night has the biggest impact on how we feel the next morning. And that's really where you get that feeling of like, oh, how can it be another day? How can it be another meal? And that's the opposite of how we want to feel. We want to feel like, oh my gosh, yay, another day off. Another wonderful experience to have with friends. So pace yourself. Also pace yourself on an emotional plane. If having guests is a lot of work for you, then make sure you have a balance of how much time you're leaving yourself to clean up, to reset the house, instead of setting an unrealistic ex expectation that's gonna leave you feeling resentful and frustrated. When, next question, uh, when we're eating out at other people's houses and we have no control over the menu, this is really common and it's very helpful to bring food that does not include 
the cheese and the melty. And it's so fun to like, oh, everybody's bringing like pasta and lasagna. So I'm going to bring like cauliflower rice and cheese. That's great. But you probably are going to want to taste the lasagna and maybe the macaroni and cheese and maybe the salad someone else is already bringing with feta cheese and sweet potato, right? Like all of the things. So you're better off bringing the plain but really beautiful and well-presented vegetable platter, the plain salad, the thing that you can use to kind of fill up on and then have taste and enjoy the experience of all the sensational specialty foods that are happening on the holiday. And this is something to really remember in summer as well, where it's true, it's true, the beginning of the summer season. And a lot of times we're putting out a ton of fresh fruit. Fruit is amazing, but it is not a great dessert after a very heavy meal. The fruit kind of sits on top of all that food that you've just eaten and ferments and can cause a lot of gas and bloating. So you're better off having some tea, having uh, Lily's hot cocoa, having a small bite of the actual dessert that's served maybe from your husband's plate, from your kid's plate, or leaving it on the table, walking away from the table, then having three or four cups of fruit, feeling like you're being healthy, and then still feeling poorly at the end of the meal. Any more questions on kind of desserts and things like that? Okay. So um, the next question on Shavuot here is really managing expectations. Uh, you want to keep in mind that on the mornings and at night, you want to be getting some activity. And this is really goes into the next question, which was about exhaustion and staying up late and kind of having your sleep schedule thrown off. But it's very important that you plan some walks in. You're talking about four to five days of a lot more intake and consumption than usual. And holidays have a lot less activity. Usually you're running up and down the stairs. Maybe you're doing laundry. You're running around. You're going to the park. You're going to work. You're moving a lot more than you are on a Shabbat or holiday. And that's going to mean that your amount of that you're using of your energy is just not going to be where it is on a regular day. So you're already consuming more. You're already consuming higher fat, higher calorie foods, more indulgent foods. We want to balance that by making sure that we take a walk each day, that we stretch, that we check in with our fullness. And there might be a meal that you're not going to eat everything or taste everything that you put out. Remember, you can always make macaroni and cheese again another day. The last note, and this was really impressive. One of our amazing Shabbat Ideal Weight Blueprint um, people in the cohort, our community members, had a really great idea. She was talking about her list of things that her kids always watch Shabbat. Macaroni and cheese, lasagna, and cheesecake. Like they have to be, and she was like, well, I'll make them all for one meal. Don't do that. It's actually not helping your kids. And as we discussed it, it turns out everybody's had an experience where their kid was either throwing up after Shavuot or not feeling well. And their kids are complaining about stomach upset and their kids are bloated. It's not just us. Separate out those cheesy, heavy items to different meals. You can have salmon and salad and macaroni and cheese one meal. And then you could have lasagna and salad and roasted vegetables, another meal. Then maybe you have cheesecake um, between meals, like at Kiddush or uh, as an appetizer. And you don't serve dessert after the meals at all. You just have tea and you play games and you do other, you learn Torah, you do other things. So there's many, many different versions of how you can have the most incredible, engaged, and spiritual Shavuot. One of the really cool things about Shavuot is why do we eat dairy anyway? Well, because they were learning about the um, mitzvot and obligations of kashrut. And in order not to make mistakes, they weren't uh, mixing meat and milk and they were kind of keeping everything separate. They kind of had new dishes. And so there's a lot of different communities that actually um, have a custom of now having cheesecake as the first course, a small portion, and then only having meat meals over Shavuot because now that we know and um, Chabad has this minhag and we are fully present in the halachot, their suda, their celebration is actually a regular fleshik meal and then they have the cheesecake first. Uh, if you're really into going all out on the dairy, remember you can always make smaller portions. Instead of making a 9 by 13 pan of lasagna like you would for a regular day of the week, 
make tasting menus of all the different things. That way people can have a taste of lasagna and a taste of macaroni and cheese and some salad, but they're all gonna fit on someone's plate. I highly recommend a buffet. And when you're making your portions, especially when entertaining, don't think of a portion of each thing per person. Think about a plate, a plate and a half of food per person, and then double, triple up on the vegetables. My rule of thumb is for every carbohydrate I serve, I have two vegetables. And that really helps to keep a good balance on what would be on someone's plate and make sure that there's a abundance of delicious, yummy foods available. Okay, our last question, next question is exhaustion eating. If you want to eat more when you are tired, put a one in the chat, even if you're replaying, come on, participate, engage, put a one in the chat so I know you feel me, right? I know I want to eat more when I'm tired. And Shavuos, when I had little kids, was a really challenging holiday because I was not getting as much sleep and my husband was sleeping more. But guess what? When I have teenagers, it's challenging in a different way. I get to stay up and learn now and I'm staying up later and I'm still getting up in the morning to pray. I'm still getting up to stretch. I do a yoga routine every single morning on Shabbat and Chag. And it really helps me to check in with my body before I start the day. How hungry am I? Am I still full from last night? Okay, pace myself so I'm not overeating the next day. It really helps me check in with my body and I highly uh, I highly recommend it. And I teach my yoga routine in the Shabbat Ideal Weight Blueprint Group Coaching. And I have a short video of a few moves that you can do in the digital Shabbat Ideal Weight Blueprint. If you have some moves or questions about moves that you can do at home, I'm happy to answer them. Just put them here in the chat and I'll share some things that you can do to check in with your body. Deep breathing, pull in the belly button, feel how full you still are from the night before. So how do we deal with exhaustion eating? If you're more tired because you have small children or if you're in that stage of life where you're getting to stay up late and you're sleeping and your whole sleep schedule is off, you're napping and then you're up too late and then you're napping and then you're up too late, it really throws off our body's natural rhythm and we end up eating at random times and kind of eating random food. So the best way to combat this is to double and triple up on your water. To always be drinking 16 ounces and that's like a very large drinking cup of water before each meal or snack. If you're going to grab something, make sure you have a water bottle with you at all times or really big cups and be drinking water throughout the day. It can be lemon water, it can be iced tea. Any of these things really work to check in with your fullness before you're putting food in your mouth because you can't rely on it's meal time if your whole body is out of sync and all your meal times aren't really in sync with your normal schedule. You have to work on that self-awareness and I know that you can. Not only can you, but when you do, you're gonna feel so much better. You're gonna feel like it doesn't matter what craziness is happening around you, you are centered and you have an internal sense of alignment that's gonna bring you so much more joy this holiday. So if you have any more questions on exhaustion eating, hashtag replay, put them here in the chat and I'll try to come back and answer them as well. Our last topic uh, for today was, we had exhaustion eating, we had that, oh, having a comeback. How many times have we felt off maybe after the Shabbat and then we're going into Shavuot and we're like, that's it. I'm just going to start after Shavuot. I'm going to start after the holiday. I'm going to just eat whatever I want, whenever I want it. I know I'm not going to feel good, but it's just too much emotional, mental, physical effort to get started. We've all been there. You're not alone. How do we get ourselves out of that rut? We make it really small. You're thinking, and I've been thinking anytime that's happened to me, and I know what goes through our minds. I have to check all the boxes to start to feel better. I have to be ready to put in all this effort and discipline to feel better. And it's simply not true. If in your next meal, you eat a little bit earlier, you eat a little bit less, and you drink more water already by the next morning, you're going to be able to feel a little bit lighter. You're going to feel a little bit better. And you'll be able to be back into a more normal rhythm of eating. If vegetables aren't looking good to you because you've been having more processed food and you've been feeling really out of it and more hollow and you're having a lot more cravings, take just one or two meals 
and say, you know what, just one or two meals, I'm going to have more vegetables. I'm going to have a little less salad dressing. I'm going to have a little less salt. I'm going to have a little less sugar. And I'm just going to retune my palate. It happens literally in 48 hours. 48 hours, your tongue is already creating new taste buds. Your body's already turning its cells over. And you can be feeling better. It doesn't mean that it has to be, oh, I, have, I have to go through a huge detox. Your body is detoxing constantly. Drink some more water, have some more veggies, take it lighter for a meal or two, and you'll feel better and back on track right away. The worst thing that you can do is to give up on yourself and just create more momentum and more weight gain that's going to take away from how good you feel going into summer, going into the next season, and you never want to feel resentful of our Jewish holidays. They are truly an event on abundance and a blessing, especially Shavuot. These are very special holidays that have deep, deep meaning and spiritual, you know, juju for us as a Jewish people and as individuals. So it behooves us to take personal responsibility to feel good before, during, and after the Chag. And if there's any other way I can help you do that, uh, I'll put a um, link here to set up a session with me, uh, get to know you session, 15 minutes. You can ask me some questions you have if you want to personalize your Shavuos experience and get back on track. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm going to go get some lunch. I hope you eat some lunch, but I'm definitely going to be starting with water. If you have any other questions on exhaustion, eating, Shavuot, or getting back on track after you fall off, hashtag replay, put them here in the chat and I'll check back in later. See you next Thursday.